What's happening, Rangers? It's Kaywing here, and it's time for another Po Rangers Battle for the Grid news update. So behold the viewing globe. Today we're talking Megazords. It's time to go mega and combo with the Megazord. I just love saying that. It's so catchy and true. Now, you guys know what I'm talking about. Earlier this week, we saw the brand spanking new trailer for Battle for the Grid that introduced the Ultras, or the Megazord mode. And a lot of people were asking me, Hey, K-Wing, how in the world do you use the Megazord? Well, I'm going to teach you guys how to use the Megazords in this video. And also, later on in the video, stick around because Enway themselves will explain how to really implement the Ultra, or Megazord mode in Battle for the Grid. So as you saw from the trailer, uh, Green Ranger summoned Dragonzord and then did some crazy moves and worked in tandem with his Megazord, creating Combo Zord, or Combo Megazord, uh, whatever you want to call it. But how did he do that? How did Tommy, besides using his flute, uh, summon the Megazord? So how Enway is going about it for this game, because they don't want people to go crazy with Megazord battles, which is what people would want, actually, but all you do is, when your ranger has only one assist left, or no assist, then you can summon the Megazord. And if you have uh, no helpers left, all your rangers are defeated, all your allies are gone, then the Megazord will become more powerful and you can use it longer. Whereas if you have a surviving team member, then, you know, you can use the Megazord in limited spurts. But it still will do the same uh, stuff, except its damage will be increased if you're by yourself. Uh, Enway did that so that the other player who is at a disadvantage can easily turn the tide of battle using their Megazord, which is pretty cool if you think about it. And it would make sense when a ranger's back against the wall, summon a Megazord, and the Megazord does their thing. So I don't know the specifics because I haven't had hands-on with the game just yet, but uh, from what Enway explained to me is the Megazords uh, are basically like giant assists. So you would actually execute their different moves from stomping on people using the Power Sword or Goldar Sword and also uh, some type of elemental ability like the Megazord has a lightning ability and you would activate um, all these sequences by pressing the different buttons for the assist that you normally use to either summon uh, two assists at once or one assist and have them work with you in harmony. So this way you bring about the Megazord by using the assist buttons after, you know, you've met the certain conditions. And it's actually pretty awesome. Now, uh, one of the very cool things about this game that I did learn about in regards to the Megazords, only one person at a time can summon a Megazord. Uh, otherwise, it would get pretty messy. I, I don't know if the game would crash, but I can see people abusing that a lot. Because, let's face it, one of the great things about Power Rangers is using the Megazords, am I right? Of course I'm right. So what we have for the gameplay to show you guys today is the Dino Megazord, or the OG Megazord, uh, Goldar doing his, you know, evil Goldar stuff, and of course, Dracodzord, which you saw in the trailer, so probably not gonna dive too much into that because people want to see Dino and Goldar in action. But before we get to the actual explanation from the developers themselves, uh, if you guys are excited about the Megazords being used in some capacity in Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, smash that like button and also tell me in the comments how you feel about this mode. If you think it's going to be heavily abused or if it's going to make the fighting game even more fun. So I will be back uh, later this week with the Mastodon vs. Uh, Cat uh, video, which will be discussing that. And I have tons of other Power Rangers gameplay that will be going up over the weekend. So with that out of the way, I'll let you guys enjoy the uh, walkthrough from Enway themselves, which is from a live stream that they did earlier this week, and it will teach you all the technical things about how to summon the Megazords. Take it away, Enway. So, <laughs> uh, the, the way the Megazords work in our game, you know, when you, when you pick your characters, you pick your, you, you pick your squad, and then you pick your Megazord, and, uh, you know, it's a 3v3 fighting game, but once you lose one of your characters, um, the, the Megazord icon becomes available. And basically, you use um, assist one and assist two to, to activate at the same time. Of course, if you have uh, all three of your characters left, uh, both assists will call out both of your assists, but if you only have uh, one character or no characters, then you're going to get the Megazord instead. 
And what happens is if you activate your Megazord mode when you have only one character left, it lasts for a certain amount of time, and you get even more time if you are the last character left on the squad. Um, it's really meant to, you know, think about it as sort of like a, another assist that you get once, uh, once you uh, uh, lose uh, sort of your other characters for the assist. And, you know, it was really important to us that we added Megazord in some way, shape, or form in the game. And, uh, you know, it's, this was, uh, we felt, the most exciting way to really add Megazord combat into the game. Uh, so, um, of course, we have three Megazords that you can choose from. Dino Megazord, uh, Mega Goldar, you know, make my monster grow kind of deal, and of course, Dragon Sword. So um, the way it works is I activate, and now um, my three attack buttons, which are light, medium, and heavy, um, all do a different Zord attack. So this is um, uh, Dino Megazord light. Ow. <laughs> so shows that, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Dino, he stabs his sword in front of you, sort of moves you back, right? It's really good for corner carry, and does a lot of chip damage, you know, really good for uh, cornering opponents like that. Uh, his medium attack, sword into the ground, oh, excuse me, stomp. Oh, stomp. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a low, no. low yeah, attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, yeah, so um, the way this attack works is um, uh, the first hit is low, so it's kind of, you know, stomping on the ground, you have to block that low, and of course, if you don't block it, you get juggled over the kick afterwards. Really easy, to, oh, excuse me, really easy to combo off of. Uh, oops. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, a lot of the Megazord's attack attacks are really meant to be easy to cobble off of. If you're good. Yeah, yeah. If you're good. If you're good at it. If you're good. There you go. And that's, that's the heavy, you know, puts the sword into the ground and uh, blocks the lightning. Uh, and this attack is good because there's sort of a gap in between uh, the different. Uh, yeah, the uh, each lightning attack, so you, it's good for like if, if she starts blocking, then I can jump over it, right? And then cross up, and of course, I can combo off of that. Yeah, so, um, and then of course, Boldar, which uh, Long wanted to jump the gun and <laughs> beat the crap out of me with it. So, we got Mega Boldar in the game, had to have a villain, you know? And, uh, Ooh. Oh, oh, wait, what was that? <laughs> So uh, the way um, the way that we've differentiated the Zords is that you know they have their own uh, strengths and weaknesses. So uh, Goldar's strength, <laughs> Goldar's strength, of course, is that his attacks come out extremely fast and uh, not as tricky or as lockdowny as some of the other um, sword attacks in the game. However, they come out super fast and do uh, you know, um, some good damage. Um, so for Goldar, the jab, um, uh, the L, the L attack, it's a triple sword attack. So it's meant to be sort of like a, you know, like, uh, it's a sort of meant to be a, a, a Zord combo attack. So not only does it do multiple hits when you get hit by the first one, you get by the rest of them, but you can combo off of that as well. You want to show. Oh, oh. And the media, yeah, let's so see. yeah. The, the, Oh, the jab one. <laughs> yeah, the jab one. <laughs> so Goldar with the with the triple, uh, the triple stab. Yo. Yeah. So the medium. Ooh. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, the medium is a stomp. The stomp is an, uh, it's actually a double overhead. So you know, if the stomp comes out and you know, you know, you can trick your opponents and then you know you don't know which one's gonna come out. Or you can try to try to tell from what attack they're doing, and then if I'm trying to block that overhead, then of course. Shady's gonna start going low on me. Yeah, the mind game is uh, the fist is really quick, so and it does a lot of damage. Yep. And it kind of keeps him in the air. And then the, and then you, you trick him with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my favorite one's the sword, honestly. Yeah, the sword's really sweet. Sweet. And then uh, yeah, yeah, and then a lot of the attacks are really meant to be really huge physical attacks that hold our really and it's meant for you to so you can only only one um, only one player can activate Zord at once. So there's really a lot of strategy as far as you know. Uh, do I use it to come back? Do I use it to solidify a lead? Can I, if I have one character, if I have no characters left, can I use my entire Zord activation to win the round so that my opponent doesn't get to lose theirs? Uh, that sort of thing. Um, and of course, as long as showing that you can combo into your Zord activation. Okay, so we have Zord combos. Yeah, you cancel uh, any normal and special into Zord. Yeah. And uh, the 
the way we have it set up right, the way we have it set up right now is that um, the resort activation is invincible. So no matter what, uh, even if I activate this during, or if I activate this and, and long tries to hit me uh, right away, I'm going to be able to block. So it can also be used as sort of a, a defensive mechanic if I don't want to block a mix-up and I can activate my um, Megazord and block. Uh, of course, uh, uh, clever opponents will mix you up after that. That can be great. And also, we have some um, sound and a, a UI element with that danger so that you know that the blood attack is coming. Uh, of course, you can uh, really trick your opponent on which attack is coming and all that, but we wanted to give you know, some sort of indication that there's something wrong with the block. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I'm gonna, I want to show you guys uh, the dragon sword, sword. So I'm gonna uh, switch this over so we can, oh, so we yeah. can switch characters. So the third choice for Zords is of course uh, dragon sword. Uh, this is the light attack. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Sparks. Oh, oh. Yeah. The medium. You stop. And this is the <laughs> <laughs> I never get tired. Yeah, I've seen that a million yeah. times. It's yeah. amazing every time. Hey! <laughs> and it just drops nonchalantly out of nowhere. Hey, all right, all right. Let me ch check out my Zord combo. Check out my Tommy combo. Come see my Tommy. Yeah. I had any practices. Here we go, here we go. Ooh, yeah. first try! <laughs> first try! <laughs> Oh my god. Did that look familiar, guys? I'm pretty sure you saw that in the video. Yeah, so the way that Dragon Zords, Mega Zord, Zord attacks work, so um, generally for all three of the Zords, the light attack comes out the fastest. Uh, it's the same for the Dragon Zord as well. So the, the tail drill is meant to do, you know, huge chip damage, and also if uh, Shady blocks it right here, then I can, you know, go for overhead. Oh, which here it is. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't oh, it. I should have said anything. <laughs> I should have said anything. Or I could go low, you know. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so um, medium is the stomp, and um, maybe you guys uh, uh, might think we're evil for this, but the stomp is actually sort of like an earthquake attack that is unblockable. So no matter what he does. Oh, excuse me. Oh, <laughs> Get mixed up. Right? It's unblockable. And I can sort of you know, continue my combo from there. Of course, the, the hit stun scaling and the damage scaling um, goes up uh, after getting hit with the stomp. I'm sure some clever players out there will figure out a way to, you know, really make it some nasty mix up with the, with the stomp. Uh, but it's really easy to avoid, you know, it's not the fastest attack and you can just jump out of the way. Uh, and, uh, of course, I'll be vulnerable at that point. Uh, um, and then um, the heavy attack is the tail, does good damage, and also it w it's an overhead. So, of course, <laughs> if I do this and I start going low, yeah, he's in trouble. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, sorry we couldn't show it to you le last week, but, uh, yeah, Megazords, they're in the game, <laughs> and also, <laughs> and we, uh... We made them today. <laughs> <laughs> we just made, they're, yeah, freshly made. Yeah, uh, we, uh, That's why when we activated, I think we might have activated on accident last week. Yeah, hands off the G. So, you know, part of the strategy is, is that, you know, if I have my Megazord active, um, you know, these huge attacks are coming and all that, but that doesn't mean that uh, the opponent can't do anything, you know, even though, you know, the attacks are huge, but once you learn how to defend against them, of course, Shady, he can still do his super, right? He can still do his EX, he can still do his EX attacks, he can still, you know, sort of feign vulnerability and, and hit me during my, uh, during my Megazord mode. Those are really good, too. Yeah, yeah, throws, you know, you'll, it'll, you'll avoid... You'll, you'll avoid the Megazord attack if it's coming up because you're in the throw animation. Yeah, so he, avoided right, that, right, right. he avoided that stomp completely because he was throwing me. And of course, I could check the throw. I can jump out of the yeah. throw. Uh, but really, uh, it's about sort of uh, defending yourself during the, the Megazord mode. And that means not only just running away and blocking, but it also means attacking. You know, attacking with the EX, attacking with you know, mobility attacks, attacking with your super. 
And um, what we suspect the early meta will be in regards to Megazords is that uh, players will like to up back, try to get away from it. And of course, the answer to that is uh, Invincible anti -Hunter. So, you know, uh, again, just to reiterate, uh, anti-airs are not air blockable in our game. And so if you notice that your opponent is just you know, sort of up back and trying to get, get away from your Megazord, then that's a, it's a, it's a free anti-air so long as you get the timing down. And so it's going to be really important that you, not only just for Megazords, but just for the game in general, it's really important that you learn what your anti-airs are just to punish people from up back in, right? Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, wow. Pretty sure that every time I play to get shady, he uses gold all the time. <laughs> and he just starts stabbing the punch. <laughs> <laughs> and this is this is especially good for a character like Cat, who has really good air attacks. Um, you know, a, a lot of a lot of the way that people will try to use Zords is they'll you know try to just jump and press the button, so maybe they try to mask which which Megazord attack they're using. So uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of you know tricky setups and tricky ways to hide what attack you're using or taking advantage of the attack and also defending against Megazord. Thanks very much, Enway, for the awesome explanation and cool gameplay of Power Rangers Battle for the Grid. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I will be back with more Ranger videos this weekend, like I said, Mastodon Sentry and Cat, along with uh, some of the matches that Enway did and maybe some new footage you haven't seen quite yet. But thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe if you're new, and I will see you Rangers with more Power Rangers content very soon. If you like this, check out some of the other cool videos on K-Wing's Let's Plays. Until we meet again, God bless and happy gaming, thanks so much for watching, may the power protect you. See ya!